How do you grow those large, firm red tomatoes sought by processors for so many widely used products? Tomato sauce, tomato soup, tomato juice and many others. First of all, healthy seedlings are essential for a healthy tomato crop. This means much painstaking work even before the crop is planted. Seedlings are usually produced in skillion type wooden cold frames, five feet in width and large enough for the number of seedlings required. The soil should be screened first to remove stones and coarse material. New soil of a light sandy loam texture is best and is filled in the frame some six inches above ground level. Soil-borne disease, such as damping off, will attack the tomato seedlings unless controlled by soil sterilization. This is done by using diluted formalin. Add a half gallon of commercial formalin to a four gallon drum of water and mix thoroughly. Then add to 25 gallons of water. This makes a 2% solution of formalin which is watered on the loosely cultivated seed bed at two gallons per square yard. Cover the seed bed with a tarpaulin or hessian cover to hold the fumes in the soil for two days. Remove the cover after this period and fork the bed over. Complete fertilizer at one ounce per square yard can now be added to the soil and mixed in. Allow 10 to 14 days before sowing the seed. Use seed of the variety approved by your processor best suited to your field conditions, selected from mother plants or obtained from a reliable seed merchant. One of the serious diseases of tomatoes, bacterial canker, is carried in the seed. Bacterial canker can be controlled by treating the seed in hot water at 131 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 minutes by the method now being demonstrated. Tomato seed can be easily damaged by incorrect treatment. So contact your local tomato supervisor for full details of this treatment. At the same time, check the accuracy of your thermometer. Dry the seed by spreading it out in a thin layer away from direct sunlight. After the treatment, place the seed in a bottle and add a seed protectant dust such as thirum or copper oxychloride, approximately a half ounce to one pound of seed. Remove the excess dust by shaking on a wire screen. The seed can be stored in a bottle until time for sowing. Sowing times vary between districts, but probably most seed is sown near the end of August. Having produced a fine seed bed, make shallow drill rows four inches apart. Sow the seed evenly along the drill rows, cover with a light sprinkling of sandy loam soil, and water lightly with a fine nozzle sprinkler. Keep the soil moist, but not too moist, until the seed has germinated. Next, place the portable glass covers in position, closely together to keep out drafts. Cover with a hessian sheet in the late afternoon to retain the heat gained during the day.
condensation of moisture on the glass indicates that ventilation is necessary. From the time seedlings produce the true leaves, lift the frames during the warm parts of the day, increasing the amount of ventilation as the plants grow. First the narrow side of a brick, then the long side, then place each alternate glass cover over the next until finally most of the frames are removed during the day. Weeds must be kept under control at all times in the seedling bed. Note how easy cultivation is with a hand tool when seed is planted in rows. At the same time, soil can be hilled up around the stems of the seedlings, encouraging further root development. These young plants must be kept well watered, but not over watered. Note the fine spray being applied by the thin nozzles. A fine nozzle watering can is also suitable. Watering in the late morning is recommended. Seedlings must be protected against disease and pest attack by using dusts or sprays containing DDT, Zineb and sulphur. Hand dusters are effective and preferred to primitive methods. Note how sowing the tomato seeds in drill rows enables a very thorough dust application using the knapsack duster. Dust the seedlings every seven to ten days, preferably just after watering. Another practice gaining favor to encourage strong, bunchy root growth is to cut the tap root with a rotary cutter running along at an angle between the drill rows. The advantage of this treatment is well illustrated by comparing the compact seedling having well-developed roots to the less desirable lengthy seedling having fewer root fibers. When the seedlings are required for field transplanting, water the seed beds thoroughly. Pull out seedlings by hand and collect in bundles of 50. Moisten the roots and wrap the seedlings in damp peat moss and newspaper. Then pack in boxes for transport to the field. In the field, select a soil type which is friable and well drained. Loams and sandy loams are ideal for tomato growing. Do not use the same area for more than two years in succession because of the buildup of soil-borne diseases. Plow the paddock in late autumn and allow to remain under fallow during the winter months. Old pasture paddocks on the right soil will produce good tomato crops. In the spring, disc cultivate the soil and smooth to remove any irregularities. Well graded soil is the first essential for even application of irrigation water. A correctly operated grading machine removes soil from the rises and places it in the hollows. Fertilizer may be applied in conjunction with the furrowing out process. A recommended rate would be four bags per acre of three to one mixture of superphosphate and sulfate of ammonia. Layout must take into account the contours of the paddock and direction of furrows must allow sufficient fall for a flow of irrigation water. Length of bay should be about a chain. Four feet is a good spacing between furrow centers. There are several methods of transplanting seedlings. Distance between plants should be about two feet. Irrigation water is most necessary for wetting the soil. It is important too that the seedlings are placed carefully so that the roots are not bent up and that no air pockets are left around them. Implements for making the planting hole vary from trenching tools, hose, to trowels. 
The important thing is that the seedlings must be watered in at the time of planting. After the seedlings have settled, the planting hole is filled in with a mulch of dry soil to the level of the first true leaves. Tomatoes may be planted more rapidly by transplanting machines which carry water tanks and mechanically inject water at each planting site. Mechanical transplanting is becoming an increasingly common practice. Frost danger determines the date of early plantings. Middle of November is the latest safe date in southern districts, late November for northern districts. Note frost damage to these seedlings planted too early. When seedlings have become established and weeds are beginning to grow, the fields are cultivated by scufflers and the furrows reform to take irrigation water. Tomatoes are grown through the dry period in the year so that irrigation practice is probably the most vital operation in successful tomato growing. The basic factors essential for good irrigation are satisfactory soil type, adequate grading and correct layout design which should provide for quick drainage of furrows after heavy rain. Water will come from the main channel along the head ditch and be fed into the, a number of channels. Don't run a larger stream of water than can be carefully handled. Water in furrows should be controlled to give a thorough penetration to the full depth of the root zone. Possibly the best system for irrigating tomatoes is called the Spanish system, in which water is ponded in broad, deep furrows. It is also possible to drain this system after heavy rain. Note the penetration of water to the full width and depth of the root area. The Spanish system is also well adapted to steep slopes where furrows are made on the contour and later in the season to a self-watering system. Whatever method of irrigation is used, the important features are broad-based furrows with slow streams allowing the water to soak through the soil. The amount of moisture penetration should be tested regularly. This soil has adequate moisture, but when it crumbles after kneading, immediate watering is necessary. Very serious losses to tomato crops are caused by water logging due to the lack of good drainage. Drainage is just as important as irrigation itself. Scuffling to control weeds is carried out between irrigations until the growth of plants no longer permits the passage of a tractor through the crop. Scuffling also breaks the soil crust formed after irrigation. It is not desirable to cultivate while the soil is wet. A regular fortnightly dusting and spraying program is essential. Your local tomato supervisor can supply you with up-to-date recommendations on the control of diseases such as target spot, tomato and potato grubs and tomato mite using either dusts or sprays. Harvesting time and careful handling of tomatoes is essential to deliver a good quality product. Do not pull the tomato from the bush. It will leave the stem attached to the fruit. This stem is likely to puncture other fruits in the case. Pick only the fully ripe tomatoes and reject any disease or insect damaged fruit. Handle the bushes carefully and pick with both hands, palming and twisting off the fruit.
don't throw tomatoes into deep tins or they will split and crush. Damage to tomatoes can be avoided by picking into kerosene tins cut along the long side and with a piece of hessian on the bottom. Roll out gently when filling the lug. This abundant harvest of quality fruit is loaded onto transports and taken immediately to the processing factory. Here, handled with great efficiency, the boxes complete their journey. Placed on conveyors and moved into the factory, the tomatoes are passed through numerous operations. They are washed, inspected and pulped. Last they are packed and the finished product now emerges and starts its journey to the consumer. <laughs>